What's going on guys? Sir Lionheart here coming at you with a very quick channel update. Ooh, this is not a channel update. <laughs> Yo, I've been so conditioned to say exactly that, that I totally forgot. This is not a channel update. This is a QA video. I'm oh, I'm so sorry, dude. I'm sorry, production team. I'm sorry for so wasting all y'all time. Yeah, yeah, we good? We good? Shake my good. hand? We good. Shake my hand, bro? Yeah. Yeah, thanks, yeah, man. man. Cool, man. Yeah. It's cool. Sorry, it's cool, bro. Man. I wanted this yeah. all day anyway. Yeah, man. Yeah. Sorry about that. But anyway, what's going on, guys? We are here. It is the 19th of August, which is a Sunday. And we are here to do our first QA vid. Now, most of the time, you only see content on here related to gaming or just channel updates or even sometimes gaming discussions. But for a while now, I've been wanting to do some QA stuff with you guys. Uh, just so, I don't know, maybe you guys can get to know me a little bit better, all right? So, I mean, I'm not the same type of person. When I, when I play games, I'm a bit different. My persona is a bit different than my true self, okay? That's, that's just a given. I'm not that same guy that, you know, roasts characters in game, all right, outside of playing games. I don't get super frustrated. I don't get salty like that. I'm actually a pretty chill dude. So hopefully some of these questions won't be ridiculous to activate my persona, but I guess we'll have to find out. So let's get started. So I think this is a very fitting question for it to be the first question that I'm gonna read off here. And this is from Soul Eater. He asks, what made you wanna start a YouTube channel? Now, there's actually a lot of reasons why uh, I started a YouTube channel. There's a lot of motivations included. And I'm, I guess I'll try to address them all really quickly. Um, but one of the reasons why I started YouTube was because I saw other people do it and they weren't doing the things that I wanted to see. So I was like, let me be the one to do things the way I want to do it. And basically, that's how it started for me a little bit, was that I saw no one doing live commentated RPGs. I wasn't seeing anyone presenting them in the style that I wanted it. All right, I wanted to see like intros and outros and whatnot, and no one else was doing that. There was one guy, Chunga, Chugga Conroy, he, I like that guy. When I was first watching YouTube, he was one of the people I would watch and stuff. And um, I was like, you know what? Why doesn't everybody, you know, do exactly what he does? Make an intro for his playthrough, you know, walks everybody through the game. And I was like, that's what I want to do. So, I mean, the very first playthrough I ever did any of that for, all that was incorporated in the Tales of Graces F playthrough, I believe. So if you wanted to look up some history, go back to the TOG. I actually didn't make an opening until like episode 80 something. I could be wrong, but the intro is really bad. <laughs> but if you wanted to see the intro, you could actually go watch the intro yourself. Uh, it's like, if you go past episode 100, you'll see the intros and whatnot. I even wanted to do like little recaps right before like the intro, kind of like an anime. And if you watch some of the episodes that tell the graces F, you'll actually be able to see me doing all that. But I don't know. I guess it, it felt awkward to have a recap, especially if you were watching it back to back in the playlist. So I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to stop doing that. But yeah, one of the motivations for me doing YouTube was because not a lot of people presented it in the way that I wanted to watch videos. And I was like, I could probably do that. All right. Because the whole feeling I had was I could probably do it better. That was one of the things, that was one of the reasons why I started, because I wanted to present content and do it better than other people, and I felt like I could. One of the other reasons why I started doing it was because at the time, I think it was 2011, I just broke up with my ex-girlfriend, and I, it, it, that shit hurt, all right? That shit hurt. It was my first girlfriend, and I just, I didn't know how to deal with that. So, I mean, at the time, I was working two jobs, and... I, that, that had that off my mind and then I just decided um, you know what I, I watch a lot of DSP I, I used to watch a lot of DSP back then and I was like I was watching his videos I'm like I should I, I should I should do this you know I think I could do this and I, I basically did it as a way to fill the void 
So that's the second reason why I kind of started YouTube was to pretty much fill that little void in my in my stomach, you know. So I was like, you know, I gotta get this off my mind. And I think I think that kind of leads to the third reason was I, I watched a lot of other people. Like DSP was one of the biggest influences for me to get into doing YouTube. I'm like, if he can do it, why can't I do it? That was literally my thought process for that. I'm like, DSP can do it, I can do it. Simple as that. So those are pretty much the main three reasons why I actually got into YouTube. So the second question we have here would be from Zero's Wars. He asks, if you could go back to when you were making your first Let's Play, what would you change now versus to how you edited it and did commentary back then? Uh, the first thing I would actually change um, is definitely the audio quality. I had some really bad audio quality. Like, I at first, when I first started YouTube, I didn't have a mic. So, what I would do to record my audio commentary, I would grab a camcorder. I would use the camcorder, I would hit record on the camcorder, and I wouldn't even record like anything visually. I would just have the camcorder like sitting on like a table right next to me when I was playing the game. And it's funny because I was directly cap, you know, I was actually recording the game directly with, you know, a game capture so or hardware and software. And I was like, and I didn't, I don't know why I didn't think to get a mic at the time, but I was using the camcorder microphone to record my voice and it was just an entire process that just kind of wasted a lot of time because i would have to basically uh get the audio file off of the camcorder and put it on the computer like uh because it was saved in like avi i would have to convert that to like mp3 and then take the mp3 and then put it on the track so it was like an additional extra you know process for no no apparent reason you know it was my I was, I was starting up i had to use what i could use i mean at the time i did have two jobs i guess at the time when i started up youtube so i could have bought a mic but i wasn't thinking i was being cheap i was being extremely cheap and i just man that was just really bad like tells of grace's audio uh the final fantasy 13 2 audio was just bad like the the, the audio commentary so if you actually enjoyed the graces of playthrough good good to you good for you because i'm glad that somebody a few people were able to enjoy that because when i go back to those vids it's like terrible i'm like yo how how did i how did i even let this happen i mean eventually i think after tells the graces of i decided to buy a microphone and once I got that microphone, which brings me to another thing I would change, is the audio on that Blue Yeti was really good. But the thing is, I didn't know how to control the audio. <laughs> so like my audio would either be too low or whenever I talked, it would just be peaking. It'd be like, hey guys, what's going on? This is Sir Lionheart here. Yeah, it'd just be peaking all the time. It would just always, it just, messes with people's eardrums and i and i wish i could go back because a lot of th a lot of the playthroughs were like that when i go back even some of the stuff that was in like 2014 13 like it was like two years of just poor audio quality in imo but i think i'm starting to get a really better hang of how to balance or or how to um get the correct optimization out of my audio which is great so that's pretty much what I would change. Like video editing wise, I, I just kept learning and learning and learning. They always got better and better and better. So I don't think I would want to change anything about how I edited my playthroughs other than maybe cutting out like a lot of the idle time. Cause lately I've been uh, cutting out idle time cause I used to just keep everything in. I used to keep everything in. Well, for like the first playthrough I did, I did. But um, yeah. I, I would probably go back to like the first couple playthroughs I did and cut out the extra amount of time it took me to do anything. But yeah, that's pretty much what I would change about my old stuff. All right, so we got another question. Phoenix B asked, what was your funniest moment of the current year? <laughs> Easily, by far, one of my greatest 
or funniest moments, I guess this year was when I was playing Blade and Soul with Yosuke, Grove, Rex, a few others, but most most notably, no Ruby. So we were all playing Blade and Soul, which is funny because I was playing that because I was talking to Sarah and she had recommended that you know I play that game and I, and I gave it a go. I, I gave it an honest go. All right, we didn't play it for too long, but we did play it for like a good two weeks. And we were playing it, and there was this one quest that we did ahead of No Ruby because No Ruby was pretty much falling behind. We did this quest, it required us to like uh, set, you know, set some explosives on the enemy bases, I believe. And we set the explosives, we blew everything up, we did the quest. No Ruby needed help, so what we had to do was zone out, go back in, and then the quest pretty much repopulated everything for him. So no Ruby goes in to start the quest. I don't know where he is. I don't know where Ruby is. I just know that we are helping him on the quest. I'm killing enemies. I'm over there just searching for Ruby. I don't know where he is. And I'm like, Ruby, I don't know where you are, bro. But I'm about to detonate these explosives. I don't see him anywhere on the screen. I don't know where his location is. You know what? I think it would just be best to show you the clip of what I thought of the funniest moment. Yeah. So I'm gonna hit it. Oh, okay. Okay then. That's why. There you go. Wow, we can actually do it. <laughs> That's lit. <laughs> oh, did I blow up Ruby? <laughs> oh no! No! So no Ruby actually got blew the fuck up because of my actions and I and I didn't notice it. But it was so fucking hilarious. <laughs> Alright, so on to the next question. We have a question from the Z Killer. When did you lose your V card? I still have it. Like, why would you ask that question? Who <laughs> Why would you be walking around on this earth without this thing, without this baby? This is very important. All right, you can't enter the you can't enter the afterlife without this card. Okay, so if you lost it, I recommend trying to forge one at least, forging one of these, or at least getting it back. I don't know how you do that. That's gonna be very difficult. I don't know how you lost this card, but I need you to go get it back if you lost it. Thank you. So Timeline Man asked, Persona 1 when? That's a great question. Persona 1 was actually supposed to be played like a year and a half ago when I actually did DDS instead. And the reason why I went with DDS instead because I got a, cop a couple of copyright claims when I actually did a few of the episodes of Persona 1 I tried to upload them but I was getting copyright stuff on it. And I'm not sure if it was just because of the music or the opening intro. But I, um, like after that, some of the intro, not the intro music, but some of the music to just the game itself was getting claimed. So I don't, I, it sucked, but I'm definitely gonna end up doing a Persona 1 playthrough on this channel eventually. I mean, we played every Persona game, Eternal Punishment, Eternal et Sin, Eternal in, Sin, <laughs> Innocent Sin, Eternal Punishment, P3P, P4G, Persona 5, and eventually, P5A, I don't know if that even comes out. We did Persona Q. We did every Persona game. Assume that we're gonna do every Persona game, all right? Just assume that, because it's gonna happen, and it'll eventually happen once we find more time in uh, the upcoming, you know, couple of months, or maybe, you know, years from now. I don't know when I'll get to it, but there's a lot of games. Uh, there's a lot of interest I have. There's a lot of stuff that you guys wanna see me do, so. I don't know when we'll get into Persona 1, but it's going to get done for sure. All right, so we got another question right here. We got a question from Ramen King 247 He asks, what is the worst LP you ever did? There's actually two on my mind right now. Akiba's Trip, as well as Arno Surge, both in which they were uh, gifted games. <laughs> and I don't 
I actually don't really hold anything against the people who gifted me those games, Q or John Niles. It's just those two games were really upsetty spaghetti action. Like, I'm gonna say Arno Surge because I never finished it. So I'm gonna say that. I'm gonna say Arno Surge was the worst Let's Play because there was so much, there was so much exposition, so much so much wrong with the gameplay of the game like certain systems did not work and the balancing to the games was just completely unfair like if you put it on a higher difficulty it was just pretty much really ridiculous it wasn't even like fair at all like i remember grinding the level 40 on like hard mode to fight the fucking first boss of the game and it was just like i'm not about to put myself through this Cause I'm not having a fun time with the game story right now anyway. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to have to put this game down. All, which is funny because I enjoyed the entire summary to Seal No Surge. Which we actually read off before we played our No Surge. To get me, you know, interested and invested into the uh, No Surge. Or our No Surge. But it ended up, our No Surge was a bust. And I just quit the game. I had, I had so many frustrations with it, to be honest. But, you know, much love to Q for even... You know giving it a go and you know gifting that game to me but i appreciate it bro but that was definitely the less the worst let's play i did <laughs> definitely on to the next question and we have a question from a yaiku yaiku asks what are your top five favorite rpg games you ever played off the top of my dome tells of symphonia tells of vesperia final fantasy 4 now persona 4 golden and this last one is kind of gonna be hard there's so many choices i got disgaea i got fire emblem i could bring up the another persona game i i, I thought of it i got it all right so a hundred percent this is the list tells of symphonia tells of vesperia and then you got Persona 4 Golden, and then you got Final Fantasy 4, and then, well, of course, if you switch those two, if you want to go in order, it would be TOS, TOV, Final Fantasy 4, P4G, and then, this, this is, this is, this is hard for me, but Bravely Second, I love just the amount of stuff you can do in the Bravely series, alright? Be, like, being able to do a level 15 run on my first go throughout the entire game just using the strategies and mechanic built in the game like that game was so fun to me there was just so much you can get out of it i love the bravely series in general that was just off the top of my dome if i gave it a little bit more thought maybe but i, I gotta keep this video moving Maybe we'll get a little bit deeper into that discussion on top fives later. That could be a video for itself. But right now, let's keep it moving. So we have a question from Unlucky Gambler 721 He asked, do you think that your channel has changed you for the better? And do you feel like a more mature and better oriented person due to the channel? That's actually a good question. Um, so when I started this channel, like six years ago almost seven now um i was pretty much getting over a breakup i was pretty angry depressed pretty lonely and and i guess when i started doing my youtube channel like that loneliness disappeared that's for sure and that 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 depression definitely was being suppressed by just doing this youtube channel and whatnot I mean, it was still there when I was doing, you know, content and whatnot. I was just struggling with that off camera and I still struggle with it now. But when I was just doing gameplays earlier, I would just vent and just, just get it all out on the videos. I would just literally vent in the videos. Uh, if you go back and watch a lot of the stuff, I, I would say some really, I would say some stuff just unchecked. I, I was not influenced. I this, this was before the sensitivity like rose to a hundred and ten percent in the palace we call society. <laughs> All right, 
I was saying some things that people might find insensitive. I was I was a really person who just didn't care. Like if I said the the fajita eater, if I called you a pile of sticks, right? I I just I was pretty much uncensored back then. But once I started get, getting, you know, a you know, a following, a nice sub base. Once I realized I started having more and more people watching me, I got, I'm like, people are watching me. So I gotta watch me. I gotta watch what I say. I don't wanna upset too many people, but I still wanna be who I am. So I had to get creative and try not to like, you know, cuss as much. I still cuss, but it's like the fajita eater, the pile of sticks, the other creative ways I can, you know, kind of express my frustration but creatively and still get people to react to that and laugh at it so it's like that it, it helped me all together but it definitely changed how i talked it definitely helped me become more sociable just everything with this channel in general like when i first started i was i was just literally i was not non so i was non-social i didn't like talking to people I didn't, I didn't really care about a lot of things but starting this channel made me care more actually got me to little by little start talking uh just talking up just start talking up more about myself and whatnot i mean I, I got to meet a lot of people through this community just from doing youtube i started youtube got this following grew into a community started meeting these people through the community uh and that they influenced me they, they tell me I influence them, but they influence me to feel like a better person in, in a way. They, they influence me. I'm like, okay, I want to do good by these people. I want to make sure I don't disappoint them. I want to make sure they have someone to be like, man, that guy's good. That, that's some good in the world right there. So definitely a lot of things were influenced by just doing YouTube and by everybody in the community themselves it definitely made me into a more mature person for sure it may it actually helped me get definitely a, a lot more experience just dealing with people of different sorts because you get a lot of angry people but you get a lot of caring people too like I, I got to meet a lot of people through this community that are pretty cool like i didn't even know like i, I just I've, I've been recently talking to somebody really special to me and uh, they, they've been watching my content since like I did SMT4 and that was like in 2013 it's 2018 now and I'm getting to know this person I'm like you've been watching my content for, you've seen my content from that long ago that's crazy so that's pretty cool that that just influences me as well it's like to know that people are watching and they find some interesting aspect about you through just gameplay that it is it's it's so cool to me it's so cool to be able to change through doing what i do and just playing the games just playing games just playing games has influenced me that's crazy right just playing games the whole reason why this channel is here is because i just wanted to play games i just wanted to fill a void and we got this far it's 2018 we are doing better than ever and it's great so i i can definitely tell you yes i feel like a more mature and better oriented person due to the channel so hopefully that answers the question hopefully i didn't hopefully it made sense hopefully you guys got the gist of it i hope you guys enjoyed this video uh i definitely enjoyed answering the questions that was actually really fun to me and i'm definitely going to be doing this every month twice a month so we're going to be doing it every two weeks that'll make it easier for me to be able to push out this type of content more while maintaining my schedule with like regular let's play uploads and twitch schedule stuff and i think it's going to be great this is, we have so many questions right now. I have so many questions that I didn't even answer for this video um, that I will be leaving a lot of these questions for future videos. I think uh, with all these questions here, we probably have like at least a month 
and a half worth of questions here. I want to say for you know for the videos, of course. But we have a lot of questions to make at least a couple more videos, at least four more videos, at least. But that's it. I hope you guys did enjoy it. And if you guys obviously want to see more of this, be sure to smash the United States of Smash that like button, please. You got to do it. It's just illegal for me not to mention and sell out the smash button right now. So if you guys can smash that, if you can ultimate smash that for me, that'd be great. Please. Because if you don't, well, it doesn't really matter. Because all that matters is if y'all watch the video or not. <laughs> the like and dislikes actually don't matter. But you know what? It does matter because it inflates my ego and I need my ego to produce content. And if you guys don't like my content, then you're not, you're not helping. You're not helping, all right? If you don't like my content, it's not inflating my ego. And if my ego is not inflated, I'm not gonna be able to make content that you like. So please inflate my ego so I can make content that you like by smashing that like button, okay? Just for free 99, you can hit like and inflate Sir Lionheart's ego to allow him to make more fun content for you. So please, smash that like button. And I'll see you guys for the next video.